Hi everyone, Blake Schwank with Colorado Computer Support. And we're gonna do something a little bit different for our tech tips. We are going to start answering some questions. And one of the questions I get asked oftentimes is what makes you different or how do I select you or choose your company out of these other MSPs? And you know, it, it got me thinking, MSPs are a lot like zebras. I love zebras, the stripy horses, they're cool. You see them in herds running across the, you know, the, it running across the, the plains or Africa. And so they all look alike to me because I just don't understand that much about um, zebras and how to pick them. So I did a little bit of research because I always figured there was just one kind of zebra, like there's one kind of MSP. And I find out there's Grevy zebra, there's a plains zebra, and there's a mountain zebra. And they're very different. And their stripes are all like fingerprints, they're different to them. But between those three types of zebras, the Grevy zebra has large ears and a robust neck. The plain zebra is the only one with the uh, stripes on his belly. And then the mountain zebra um, has horizontal uh, stripes that go off on the base of the tail. So they're, they're very different. And, but you can't tell that from first glance. Like you can't tell the difference between an MSP at first glance. And there's, you know, some obvious things. If you go out there and you check out the websites of the MSPs, you're going to see that they all say the same thing, which makes it even harder. You cannot distinguish one MSPs versus another. They all pop up there. And let's, you know, hopefully, the, every MSP you look, like, look at has cybersecurity listed somewhere on their website. That they do patching, that they do phone support, they do on-site support, they hire great people, they all the same stuff that every other MSP um, says that they do. But you really have to dig in to understand what the MSP does. And, you know, and so we want to start with something semi-obvious. So we want to start with, I want to talk about the MSP size. So if you look at listings of MSPs, there's a, uh, uh, a list out there, the MSP 501. We've been on it for the last 10 years or so. It's the 501 top managed service providers. And they go from a couple person, five person operations up to um, thousands of employees. In fact, IBM, the, the IBM that started the computer um, you know, years or decades ago is offers managed services. They are a managed service provider. Um, that's probably not gonna be the ideal managed service provider for a small uh, business in Colorado Springs. Then on the opposite end of it, is there's no barrier to entry to become a, a managed service provider. You can have a one person shop with a one laptop and they can call themselves a managed service provider. So you wanna ask those questions. Either one, you know, if you're if global enterprise, absolutely you want IBM working on it. If you're a small business, maybe a home-based one person business, maybe it doesn't matter to you that your MSP is a one person shop. However, if you've got a larger 20, 30, 40 person or 200 person business, you really need to dig in and find out the depth of your MSP because as they get larger and as they get to be a mid-sized MSP, they have the depth to protect your business. If you're a one to five person shop, you can have a great relationship with the owner and everything, but unfortunately one hiccup in that business, if, if they have a health issue, if they have a key person leave, that it is a critical problem for your business. If you get to the mid-sized MSPs, they have the systems and processes in place that any one person, even the CEO, we, we have a contingency plan if I don't show up tomorrow, if something bad happens to me, the company will go on and our clients, while they might be sad, will continue to be serviced by uh, some a great team of people. So you want something probably in the middle, unless you're a global conglomerate. You want to look at what, you want to have a good conversation with them and find out what their cultures, values uh, are, because once you get past the, the basics of cybersecurity and everything else, you're going to have a relationship. You want to be able to talk to these people. You want to be able to get along with them. You want to find out how do they hire people? What is the process that they hire that they don't hire jerks? We we refuse to hire jerks. Um, and our company values 
are positive, professional, collaborative, and ethical. And we live by those every day. And we, we ask our employees to hold each other to those standards. And at a leadership standpoint, we want them to hold us accountable. So that's the way that we run our business to be positive, professional, collaborative, and ethical. Find out what your, your MSP's values are and then find out if they live if they live them. Try to do your best to find out if they live them. Uh, as you get into larger MSPs, you're going to have more processes and systems documented. Uh, this is key because as it, anybody in that organization then can go away, you're not just um, living on or you're, you're you don't want to be supported with tribal knowledge where people pass pass histories from one tech to the other tech to the other tech. You want to make sure that they have a good documentation system in place so that if the, the tech that's assigned to your account, if he goes away or she goes away, that you know that you can continue to um, to work. So, and then account management. So one of the key terms thrown around in our industry is the virtual CIO, the VCIO. It's a great idea that you take and you hire the right people and have them be the account managers for your um, your business. And the problem is not everybody has CIO experience in the MSP world. Uh, a lot of times they'll take maybe their best technician, make them a VCIO, and that's fantastic for a five or 10 or 20 person company to have someone like that as a VCIO. We call ours a business relationship manager because at that level, I don't want to send somebody that, that has never been sitting at a C-level table to go sit at, at a, with the C-level executives at a 100-person company. And so that's where my COO or myself start interacting with our clients because we have actually sat at the C-level table and know how, to, um, how, how that works in businesses different than it does in a 10-person company. You want to look at cost. Cost is going to be, it, 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 hiring an MSP is not necessarily cheap. It is better than having a single employee or a couple employees. And if we um, are doing it right, it is going to be more expensive than just having an hourly person once in a while stop by. And like any other industry, there's low cost and there's super high cost. Colorado Computer Support generally falls in the at, at the upper middle end of the of the spectrum. We can't do it cheap and have the right engineers on staff to support our clients' business. They want to the way they want to be supported. They want the phones answered by a human and not uh, going to voicemail. They don't want to get stuck in queues. They don't want to get routed to um, offshore support. The kind of clients that we support, they expect a certain level of support and responsiveness. And every MSP is going to tell you their responsiveness, they answer the phones and whatever. But really when it comes down to it, do they have the right people, the right number of people, the right experience, the right education level to support you properly? So, and then finally, just read through those Google reviews. See if they're legitimate. Try to find out who Rick wrote a review about them or talk to their other clients that are in your industry. If you're in healthcare, <clears throat> make sure you reach out to their clients, their other clients that they are supporting. If it's in construction, those are two industries that are very unique industries where you want some experience supporting it. Reach out to those other clients, read their Google reviews. If you look at us, we have 101 Google reviews right now, I think, which is which is pretty good. And uh, and so check that out. If you have questions on how to find a good MSP, you want to talk to us about what we do as an MSP, give us a call at Colorado Computer Support. Our team are experts at this. We have a deep bench. We don't have to worry about, you know, we've got protections in place if things happen to your business or our business. Find us on the web at www.coloradosupport.com or 719-439-0599. I want to thank you for joining us and have a great day.